調に信者も増えている時警察の手が入った統一教会の中で汚れた人間を清めるため復帰という淫乱な行為が行われていると疑われ逮捕証拠不十分で無罪38年の長い沈黙を破って当時の幹部が復帰について証言した復帰というものはですねすなわちセックスですセックスでも1回でなく3回やらなきゃならんです復帰にセックスによって決断交換になるのが本当です汚れた血を神が望んだ清い血に返すことが復帰その方法はセックスで行われていたと元幹部は断言する。このことをあの合同結婚に参加したものはどう思っているのだろう。血統転換っていうことを初め聞いたときは、うん、やっぱりそういうことなのかしらっていう、うん、いつやめようっていうのがありましたよね。そういうい血統転換があるんだったらメシアと私はそういう関係を持たなきゃないんだろうかっていうのがあってやっぱり嫌ですよね<音楽>かつてはセックスで行われていたという復帰の儀式それが合同結婚に変わったのである。統一教会がセックス教団だというのは教義を読んでいたから想像はできました初期の頃とはいえ実際にあったとは驚きです宗教というものはもっと理論的道徳的なものですそれから外れた宗教は宗教ではありませんを脱退懺悔の気持ちから警察牧師として囚人に祈りを捧げる男彼は何人もの女性と復帰のセックスを繰り返していた来たですよああこれが罪だな罪じゃないのこ神様のお願いを実行するためにはこれは本当のね善良い仕事じゃないかとピーンと来たりですよソウルの元統一教会員たちの口は重いユー・ヒョンミン脱退者の相談相手ともいえる彼が重い口を開いてくれた俺たちの時代は地上天国を作ると言っていたが失敗だった統一教会で祝福を受けた家族もできたがその家族を捨ててここに来たそのことは一日も忘れたことがないよいとこの新妃さんはムンソンミョンから直接復帰を受けたというムンさんが一人で寝ている部屋に入って私は復帰を受けたいって言ったんですすると資格はあるのかと聞かれたんではい資格はありますと答えましたそしたら蘇生調整完成の3回受けなければいけないと言うんです1回目の蘇生が終わったので立ち上がってお辞儀をしましまた部屋の外では年寄りの信者が寝ていたので1回で出てきたんですそういうやり方で復帰を受けたんですさらにこんな事実も打ち明けてくれた毎日原理を聞きに働かないで教会に通うんで食べるものもなくなって5人の子供たちを仕方なく個人に入れたんですソウルの郊外にある個人ここに統一教会の子供たちが入っていたという
多い時には数十人もの子供が入っていたと聞く親の信仰のために孤児院に預けられた子供たちは今どんな生活をしているのか新規さんの息子に会いに行った創設の時代に、えー、たくさんの子どもたちを個人に預けたというあの記述があるんですが、えー、そのことは事実でしょうか統一教会が俺たちを個人に送ったのかどうかは知らないよ親が別れ食べることもできなかったので幼い俺たちは個人に入れられたんだ個人に入った時次男の彼は6歳で一番下の妹が3歳そりゃあ心では統一教会を憎んでるけど俺の力ではあんな大きな集団に対して何もできないよ諦めて生きていくしかないじゃないか再臨のメシアに希望と夢を託した人たち夢破れ家族を失った彼らは一体何を求めていたのだろうお金なりいろんなものはそれはもう元は神様のものであって今サダンたちが世界で使うものでありましてそれは自分の夫の懐にあるものを盗んでで献金してもよろしいその世の中の法律にはかかるけれども天の法律にはかからないと言ってそれは安心して持ってきなさいと何回も説教しました仕事の暇を見つけては昔の仲間を訪ね歩いているユウさん今日訪ねるのは創立の頃教会の炊事の担当をしていた姉妹二十歳過ぎの明るく人気者だった姉妹も今は60代農家の娘だった姉妹は家も田畑も全てを統一教会につぎ込んだ。統一教会を抜けたくても今や脱退する気力も資金もないあれおかしい私こんな人間じゃなかったはずだってで過去の自分をふりなんていうか思い出してあ自分はあまりにも違いすぎるこれは何だろう例えば嘘をすごいいっぱいつくとかこれは何だろうって思った時にここに精神で操作されて人格が変えられていた。He was very abusive,、uh, both physically and emotionally. He is alcoholic. He's addicted to drugs. After all, isn't it give and take? And she told us he was high on cocaine or some other drug when he made this rambling, angry, off color speech to a church group. I'm standing here being judged by you. You judge me by, huh? Nansuk didn't even know Hyo Jin when she was chosen to marry him, and she certainly didn't expect a drug addict. She'd been brought up believing that the Reverend Moon's family was without sin. We had a lot of Moon and his family pictures. That, as a child, I was as a teenager. We adored, we admired, we looked at those nice smiles and happy family, and we thought that was ideal family. The Reverend Moon calls his family the true family, the perfect family. Moon is perfect human being. He's the only perfect human being on the earth, and he can choose his wife, and his wife becomes perfect as well, and so his children become perfect because they are from this perfect man and perfect woman. And so, when Moon marries more than a thousand couples at once, as he did in New York last June. 
He exhorts them to live the high moral life that he supposedly exemplifies. The church told us Moon himself had matched each couple by studying their pictures and brief biographies. And the newlyweds say they want their families to be just as virtuous as his. He sets an example um, as to how to be true parents. The world is in, in dire need of strong family values. Mm -hmm. That He not only preaches that, but he lives it as well. They have a true family and they bring up children of goodness. And without sin? No sin at all. No sin. And drugs? No drugs. Alcohol? No alcohol. Moon's theology that he is a perfect man who can create perfect family, I think kind of falls apart if I look at his children. The Moons gave birth to 13 children, and various individuals who've been close to them told us that in violation of church rules, they have seen some of Moon's children drink alcohol, smoke, and use illegal drugs. And Nan Suk soon learned that her husband is the worst of them. She lived with him here at the Moon's opulent estate north of New York City. She says the Moon's knew all about her husband's drug problem, but still they spoiled him, kept showering him with cash. When he needed cash, he went to his mom, and his mom would give him from $1,000 up to what, $50,000 and some from more. From 1000 to 50000 Yes, depends. Depends what he asks and what kind of mood the parents are in. Where did all this cash come from? I believe mainly it's coming from Japan. Ja when Japanese leaders come in, they bring cash in, and basically they give to Reverend and Mrs. Moon. And, and how would his son use those church donations? He basically used for his cocaine, his party, his waitress, well, hostess, bar hopping, all the fun things <laughs> that a person can do. Those fun things apparently included mistresses. Yojin told her he was entitled to have affairs because his father had had them. And she says Reverend Moon himself confirmed to her that he had had affairs, but the Reverend told her that God wanted him to. He told me in person that he, it, he called it providential affairs. Providential affairs? Providential affairs. What is it's providential means it's God's mission. So he had to have these affairs, extramarital affairs, because it was providential. It was God's mission that he had to fulfill. Of course, Reverend Moon does not tell his followers about that part of God's mission. Instead, he preaches that adultery is a major sin. That's the worst sin that Unification Church members could commit to have that will commit adultery mm -hmm. then you will basically burn in hell forever that's that's the, the the one single most worst thing that you can do but Hyojin did many times and his parents know but there's nothing they do but worse than the affairs she says the reverend's eldest son would beat her one awful night she told us he pummeled her while she was pregnant with their fifth child he was doing his cocaine with your and against my better judgment, I went and said, I really have to talk to you. I said, I just cannot live like this. And I, I took his cocaine and I tried to flush it down the toilet. And that's when it started uh, hunting. And I did get black eyes and I got bloody nose. And um, he, but the big fear was that um, he's, he kept saying he's going to um, kill the baby out. That you were carrying? I was carrying. I was seven, seven months pregnant. I was pretty big. And he kept saying, I'm going to kill the baby. I'm going to kill the baby. And that's the, the worst fear I had. Um, that he, he might punch. Uh, mm. And then something would happen. Whenever she told Reverend and Mrs. Moon about the beatings, Nansuk says they blamed her. I was not an ideal wife for Hyojin. That's why Hyojin behaved a certain way toward me. And I was not good member of their family. So also it was my faith. Who told you that? Mrs. Moon? Or? Both. Both of them. Mm. Yes. And it was my faith that I have to endure these things. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Nansuk is getting support from a surprising source, one of Reverend Moon's daughters, Anjin Moon. She told us her parents blamed her too when she was abused by her husband. Did he beat you? Yes. And you would tell your folks? 
Yes. And they would say? I deserved it. Anjin Moon is estranged from her parents, but she has never criticized them in public before. She and a close friend, Jeannie Honard, said that by coming forward, they hope to dissuade people from joining cults. Off camera, Anjin told us she does not believe her father's the Messiah. On camera, she put it this way. He's, he's just my father. I think that in itself should say a whole lot. Anjin is a moon, but not a moony, not a believer in her father's church. I believe in a god, but I don't think that I want to belong to one particular denomination now. What do you think of Nansuk? Honest? I think she's very honest. Do you admire her? Do you respect her? Do you believe her? Yes, I, I do. I respect and admire her very much. Nansuk got a degree in art history from Barnard College. Though she realized the perfect family was far from perfect, she tried to be philosophical about it. So what you're saying is that they're like Everybody else, like all of us who are dysfunctional, I think every family has problems. So they're like everybody else, but a little more dysfunctional than, I think, ordinary middle-class family. Well, they have more money to uh, help them to, to be dysfunctional. Yes. The church won't say how much money Moon has or how many businesses he owns, but over the years he's reported to have amassed hundreds of millions of dollars. Former Moon insider Donna Collins was the first Western child in Moon's church. She was born into it because her parents set up the church in England. I grew up believing he was the Messiah, but I can't imagine it now. Moon took a personal interest in Donna, and as a favored child from the West, she saw a lot of Moon's family. I had more contact with his family than the average member, which is probably what led me to leave because I saw a lot of the discrepancies between the teachings and his behavior and his family life. The final straw for Donna and her parents came, she says, when they discovered another Moon family secret, that the Reverend has at least one illegitimate son. Moon's daughter confirmed that. That I know, yes. You know the child? Yes, his name is Sammy. And Anjin Moon told us that the warm family pictures in the church magazine give a false impression. Now 32 years old, she works at a center helping battered women, and she has just completed a book called In the Shadow of the Moons. Why are you telling this story? Because I feel that I was duped. Duped? Duped. I feel I was conned, and I had certain naive, I think, idealism that I wanted to work for God. And I do think a lot of people have that. And a lot of organizations like Moon do take full advantage of those people. And I was one of them. Nansuk still believes in God, but she has a new way of looking at Reverend Moon. I did come to conclusion that Reverend Moon just cannot be the Messiah. What you're saying is that he's a phony. A con man. The Reverend Sun Young Moon is a con man. That's the conclusion I came with. Um, looking, living with their family for 15 years. The Reverend and Mrs. Moon declined to talk to us, but they did send us a brief statement. They wrote in part, We commiserate with Nansuk over the suffering arising from the tragic personal problems our son has faced. We as parents feel a deep sense of responsibility. I started to doubt about Mr. Moon himself too. I said to you that this tradition is Mr. Moon tradition. Mr. Moon should be a fornicator himself. The result which I find in his members is the result of what Mr. Moon is. If Mr. Moon is the Messiah, why there is this fornication? もし文教祖がメシア救い主であるならどうして彼を信じる信徒たち特に幹部においてそういう不倫問題が頻繁に起こるのですか? 
もし文教祖がメシアであるならどうして自分の一番信頼する指導者たちを指導することができないのですかそして文教祖自体が本当にメシアならどうして自分でそういう信徒指導者たちに会ってそういう指導あるいは解決をすることが自分で直接できないのですかだから回答は私の心の中で来ました彼は絶対にメシアでないということです The reason he established this unification church is to exploit people. Why are you telling this story? Because I feel that I was duped. 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 I feel I was conned. And I had certain naive, I think, idealism that I wanted to work for God. And I do think a lot of people have that. And a lot of organizations like Moon. Do take full advantage of those people, and I was one of them. Nansuk still believes in God, but she has a new way of looking at Reverend Moon. I did come to conclusion that Reverend Moon just cannot be the Messiah. What you're saying is that he's a phony. A con man. The Reverend Sun Young Moon is a con man. That's the conclusion I came with,、um, looking, living with the family for 15 years. I grew up believing he was the Messiah, but I can't imagine it now. Moon took a personal interest in Donna, and as a favored child from the West, she saw a lot of Moon's family. I had more contact with his family than the average member, which is probably what led me to leave because I saw a lot of the discrepancies between the teachings and his behavior and his family life. Anjin Moon is estranged from her parents, but she has never criticized them in public before. She and a close friend, Jeannie Honard, said that by coming forward, they hope to dissuade people from joining cults. Off camera, Anjin told us she does not believe her father's the Messiah. On camera, she put it this way he's, he's just my father. I think that in itself should say a whole lot. Anjin is a moon, but not a Mooney. Not a believer in her father's church. I believe in a God.